Hey everyone, and welcome to a very long overdue another episode of Freelance Life. Welcome, Shay. Um, a lot of stuff has changed since we've done the last episode. Um, you are now with child. Um, Indeed. So. <laughs> Thanks, Megan. Nice to be back. And in, yeah, definitely too long a hiatus. But you know what? I birthed a child in between, so I don't feel too bad about that. Um, and if anyone's watching on video and is wondering what the strange straight jacket is, it is, in fact, an infant. And straight jacket is an appropriate term, I would say. <laughs> I was going to say, keeping your baby in a straight jacket sounds apt. Uh, you yeah, know, that's, exactly. Yeah. More like the baby keeping me in a straight jacket. <laughs> uh, but um, all go so, well. Yeah, um, we, we, today, today we're going to be chatting about um, taking time off work and burnout and everything in between. So um, this is probably a great uh, place to start the conversation because – when you're a freelancer, chances are when you're not producing, you're not earning, um, except you, because your book sales, I assume, are still going. Um, you've yeah. still got some kind of passive income. But um, at the end of the day, freelancers are still human. We need a break. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe this is a great place to start uh, the, the conversation. How did you plan for maternity leave? Because uh, that's, you're actually on maternity leave. It's not like you are rocking the baby's cradle with your foot while you're still writing um. no and I don't even know if anyone is able to continue working to the same degree while you have a newborn let me know how you've done it because that is next level parenting and business owning but no so I decided I wanted to take three months off also to just give me the time to you know, enjoy a different pace of life, which sometimes I enjoy, sometimes drives me mad, but <laughs> the same can be said of business, I guess. So with anything, and I think, you know, it doesn't have to be maternity leave, but any time that you know you're going to have time off. So I mean, with maternity leave, you pretty much have eight months to plan and know that this is going to be happening in eight months time. Um, mm. When it comes to holidays and that, generally you're going to plan those a little bit in advance too. So I guess my first piece of advice would to be just communicate with your clients, your suppliers, everyone who you work with. Don't keep people in the dark because I can only imagine how frustrating it must be um, to be a client and get a message from one of your freelancers saying, oh, by the way, I'm off for three months starting next week, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. So letting them know early was very important and then continuing to remind them. So whenever I sent a client invoice, I would just include a little reminder to say, I'm going to be off for the months of May, June and July kind of thing. And same applies to going on holiday, I think, because, you know, they get that initial email, they might not put it in their calendar, they forget, and we all want to plan around it. So definitely communicating early, saving up. So, I mean, luckily I had eight months to do it. So making sure that I put some money away so that I wouldn't have to dig too much into other kinds of savings and investments during this time. Um, what else did I do to prepare? Oh, and then finding replacements and helping my clients continue. You want to ensure their business continuity too. So in some cases, I was able to work ahead a bit for some of my smaller clients. So I was able to do my work for May, June and July ahead of time. Again, that's quite difficult to manage, especially from the client side, because I mean, as we know, clients like to give you often <laughs> a day's notice, <laughs> not three months notice for something when, they when's need. the deadline? Yesterday. Yeah. My favorite so deadline. It wasn't huh. always feasible, but I did try to do a bit of that. Um, it was also a good reason to get rid of some clients that it was time to get rid of. Um, also knowing that perhaps I'm not going to have the same capacity even after maternity leave. You know, I don't know if I'm going to be able to be at my desk a solid eight hours a day or whatever I need with a little one. So, you know, it also gave me a chance to really look at my client scope and decide, okay, which are the ones that are actually, maybe it's time to let go. And this is a great excuse to do it. Um, and then the other thing is finding a replacement. So I did do that for some of my clients and I did use people that I know because then I feel a bit more assured that they know it's a temporary agreement and I'm going to get the business back because I don't want mm. to hand over to someone to a random or perhaps let the client find someone and then they say, come back and say, we don't need you anymore. 
Yeah, um, we so like the replacement more than you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Try to find someone who's actually not as good as you so that they're dying to get you back. <laughs> uh, so I don't know yeah, how, so, like, with holidays and stuff, maybe you want to talk to that. Yes. Um, so, um, you know, I like to plan things way in advance. And um, I'm actually going, uh, I'm going to be away for two weeks now, uh, October. I'm going to visit a client in the Netherlands, and then I'm taking a week to visit my brother who lives in the UK. And um, so those two weeks, as much as you think you're going to take your laptop and you're going to still keep up productivity, like let's, you need to actually be real with yourself. It's not going to happen. Um, history Agreed. has kind of dictated already that I'm not good at working when I'm not in my own And why space. should you have so, to also? Because I feel yeah. like everyone needs a break, you know? So if you can manage and make it happen, make it happen. Rather than, because yeah. then you've got your laptop in your bag and it's like the guilt factor of thinking, oh, I haven't opened it. I haven't done this. Whereas if you don't take it, it's like gone, forgotten. I can actually have a good time yeah. and relax and yeah. re rejuvenate. It's it's kind of like um, I'm working on a project at the moment and we had a strat session yesterday and uh, the strategy lady was moaning because it was her birthday. Uh, this whole big um, strat session or, or the presentation, should I say, is happening on Friday. She's going to be in the Kruger. And so from one until four on Friday afternoon, while she's oh, in no. the Kruger, she's going to be on a strat presentation call. So, oh no, how depressing. Like, you know, it's, I know. She's like, do you want to join the call? I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the ask. Uh, yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, I mean, I'm, um, so what I've done now is I have taken, um, I'm, I'm going to be away for two weeks. So that is, again, not producing, so not earning. I need to make sure that I have enough savings to cover my salary for those two weeks. Mm. Plus, I've got the expense of um, of the, the travel expenses, Actual you know. Travel, so, yeah. um, so I mean, it's uh, it's taking on additional work or or kind of uh, managing the finances a little bit so that you've got um, you can still pay yourself at the end of mm. that month. Um, so yeah, I, that's that's what I do. I've I've kind of in my my cash flow Excel spreadsheet, I've I've worked out how much loss I'm making in that month. And so over the next couple of months, I have to make an extra X amount in order to cover the time that I'm going to be out for two weeks. That is um, very organized. So, that is a yes. type <laughs> behavior. <laughs> and it's really weird because I'm like not an A type personality at all. Normally <laughs> I'm like, let's just go with the flow. But, uh, I, you know, running your own business, um, whether, whether you see yourself a freelancer as running your own business. That's essentially what you're doing. Um, mm. And you do, you have to be prepared. You have to you make sure that you've got savings to, to see you through. Um, spontaneous stuff. Um, I don't have the answer to that. I just live with the guilt if I want to take a day <laughs> off. And like, <laughs> Exactly. Uh, or even a lunch out sometimes. You still get yeah, the guilt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so let's um, let's speak about uh, moving away from um, holiday per se and uh, general life things. Um, uh, I think you do triathlons, if I'm not mistaken. I saw something somewhere mm, along the line. I have, you, yeah. The triathlons. Um, I'm, I do mountain biking. So you know you need to kind of carve out time in your schedule to to do these things that you enjoy. How do you make time for the things that matter outside mm. of the business? So I think when you said carve the time on your schedule, literally that's what you need to do and to make it a priority in your day. I mean, I know you are really good about gymming at lunchtime, for example, mm. and that is almost a non-negotiable, no matter what you've got going on. I'm speaking for you, but I know that it is a priority for you, I think. Um, you'll make sure that it happens, and it happens at the same time, so it becomes a habit. It becomes ingrained in your calendar and in your daily practice, and that's just how it is. So for me, I also like to do something similar where either early in the morning or later in the afternoon, it just, you know, for me, I don't like exercising when it's boiling hot anyway. So um, mm. that's the time that works for me. And you just make it a priority and a non-negotiable, no matter what you've got going on, um, which obviously is 
easier said than done, as we know, and we're not perfect, and it doesn't always work. But whatever that priority that's most important to you or that you know you need to fit into your day, just do it. And you'll actually be surprised how you'll come back to your desk feeling refreshed and actually more productive than if you just sat at your desk for that extra hour. So, I mean, that's talking about mm. exercise, but, you know, things like family time or, um, I don't know, working on a personal project. So writing my book, for example, I didn't always feel like sitting down after a day of writing and writing some more, but I just made it a practice. I did it. Even if I wrote 10 words one day and a thousand words the next day, um, just using the energy that I had, but making it a habit so that it wasn't something that I could just write off or put down. Um, another thing that, that helps me is remembering the bigger picture. So right now I don't feel like exercising, but how will I feel next week if I didn't exercise all week, the prior mm. week, or how would I feel in five years time if I'd never got around to writing my book, things like that. Mm. Or how would I feel flipping if I'm, well, I guess I'd have no feelings if I was in the ground and dead and all people said was, oh, she worked really hard, you know? So you know. <laughs> I think <laughs> looking, reminding yourself of what's important to you and then making non-negotiable time for it. I don't know how, how it works for you. Um, so, yes, the gym thing, I have a little gym set up in my garage, which is like two kettlebells and... Um, a pull-up bar and I've now got a punching bag because uh, we'll speak about why I bought a punching bag just now <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, yeah uh, so from 11 to 12 every day 11 o'clock I stop working because I'm usually at my desk around seven quarter past seven so that's a good kind of you know chunk of time in the morning that I am productive mm -hmm. and I, I, I have to get away from my desk because otherwise my energy just drops off and I'm useless in the afternoon so 11 o'clock, I know, is my workout time. I don't schedule meetings. I, I don't schedule interviews. I do, no podcast recordings. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and I, I've blocked off the time in my calendar. So, um, you know, it's, it's there if I need it in an emergency, but I don't like using it. Mm -hmm. Even like some days you really just are not in the mood to work out. And then like I go and have a nap. Like sometimes yeah. I just use that. I use that time to go and like chill and read a book or, you know, do whatever, sit outside with a cup of tea. Um, I'm not as good with um, other stuff, unfortunately. I, I do, five o'clock is my cutoff time. I don't work mm. after five in the afternoons, but in times, in terms of balancing everything else, um, I, my hobby is make, is, is having hobbies. Um, and I've got so much stuff on my plate that sometimes it's like, it's just a bit overwhelming. And so I don't really know what to sh schedule where. And so like, while I'm organizing the business, like my personal life is not as organized because, mm. uh, like you say, you have to schedule it and, um, yeah, and if, I mean, if that's not okay schedule... because also sometimes, you know, you have seasons, so you might have a season where you really need to focus on your business. You might have a season where you really need to focus on your mental health. You might have a season where it's all up like mine at the moment is about family and you mm. can never expect all those different areas of your life to be in balance. Like there's going to be give and take. Um, but mm. as long as you are prioritizing what you feel like you need in that moment, whatever sphere that falls into. Um, mm -hmm. And just on the Completely. top of my head, something that I wanted to mention about like your gym habit, for example, is also making it as seamless as possible. So you're not having to get a, you know, drive to a gym, spend half an hour or more in transit. And, you know, it's that extra bit of friction that might stop you from doing it. You've made it as mm. seamless as possible. Like all you have to do is walk a couple of steps, your setup's there and you can make it happen. So I think there's also something to be said for making it as easy as possible because we all are lazy and, you know, we built to seek the, the path of least resistance. So make it mm. as easy as possible for yourself to fit those things in. hundred percent. I must say working out at home has its pros and cons mm. because um, 
I don't see another human like ever. Yeah. So I do get lonely. It's nice to, when I used to go to gym, it was nice to go to gym. And even though you didn't speak to people, it was just nice to know that there's, other life, on, <laughs> there's other life on the planet, you know? Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, now, like you say, it, it would have taken an extra 15 minutes there, 15 minutes back. That's an extra half an hour I have to carve out of the schedule, which now I don't have to do anymore. So mm -hmm. um, that's fantastic. Um, I know uh, we're speaking about like personal stuff, but I know that you've carved out time for your business as well. You had um, Tuesdays. Um, where you actually worked on your business, not mm. in the business. And I, do you want to kind of dive into that mm, a little bit? Because definitely. that's just as important to carve time out for. 100%. So it, it took me quite a long time to actually, I used to just pack my day with client work and I'd get it done. But it was always frantic, always frantic. And I never actually got time to sit back and think about, Am I really running this business in the way I want to? Am I living the freelance life that I want to live? So I decided to claim back a day and I made it a full day um, to, and I made mine. Oh gosh, now I can't remember. It's only been, it's only been a month. <laughs> oh, New yeah. mom brain. <laughs> New mom brain. Yeah. So Tuesday, so it's called a Tuesday, but I did it on a Wednesday. That's why I'm confused. So where you schedule no meetings, no client work. Again, not perfect. There were times when I did have to squeeze some client work in. But the idea of having an empty schedule really allows for that innovation, reflection. You know, you can go for a walk and inten be intentional about thinking about what you want from your business, what you want from your life, and how you can make it happen. And it's amazing how at first trying to take that full day is really challenging because you think, how the hell am I going to fit everything in? But then you start, once you start reflecting, you realize what your priorities are and how you can optimize things so that you don't miss that day at all. And it's not impacting your business because you've structured your business. You've had the time to think about structuring your business better because otherwise it can become a vicious cycle. It's like, I don't have time to think about my business. Therefore, I don't have time to make my business better. Therefore, I don't have time to think about my business. And so it continues. Mm -hmm. um, so really taking that time has been instrumental in helping me just live, be more intentional about the way that I live and the way that I run my business, I guess. Mm. Um, that's something that I still need to put into practice um, I think about my business um, and I, I, all the time. Let me, let me just say, mm -hmm. when you, when you mm -hmm. leave your nine to five, no one tells you that you're swapping it for 24-7. Yeah. <laughs> because I go to bed thinking about like my business and I wake up thinking about business. I, I'm thinking about my finances all the time, which is not exactly healthy, but, you know, um, personality. But if you had a whatever. time set aside, you could take like take a notebook then you write, so let's say you can't sleep at night because you're thinking about something about your business. You take a notepad or whatever or write on your phone, make a note of it, and then you know you're going to address it on that day. And then once that thought has been filed away, it's a lot easier to rest and relax knowing that, okay, that's cool. I've recorded it. I'm going to deal with it instead of mm. getting into like a overthinking, over fatigue cycle of thought. Yeah, yeah. And um, it really does become it. It starts bogging you down and it, it clogs your thinking because you've got mm, you keeping exactly. all the stuff in your brain all the time. So, um, yeah, I still need to carve the, the, the day out. Um, I was supposed to do it like two weeks ago and then I got a project in. So as soon as that project's over, then I will have extra time. But, um, yeah, uh, well, that's that's the plan. We'll <laughs> Yeah, well, I was going to say, that's, that's bold, <laughs> bold. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I mean, th my, my concern with carving out a day is firstly, it can't be a Monday or Friday because you're very, it's, I know myself, I'm going to be very tempted to just be like, oh, mm. I'll just take this one as a long, long weekend. weekend. Um, so it'll have to be a Tuesday, Wednesday or Thursday for me. Um, and uh I, my brain is all over the place all the time. Like I, I struggle with structured thinking. So I'm worried when I carve a day out that I'm going to sit in front of my computer on that day. And I'm like, then you've got this pressure. Like, but I have to think about my business today. What? Oh, well, first, mind first tip, blank. <laughs> step, don't, don't do it in front of your computer. Go for a walk or sit in the garden with your cup of tea, you know, 
just mm. to, because like you say, because you, if you're in front of your computer, you're going to open your email. Your brain is going to go straight to whatever that email says. And you're going to start thinking about that deadline and start thinking about that project. And then you ruined. So yeah. it's, you have to, and it, it takes a lot of practice and I'm, I'm not perfect and I'm not that good at it either, but I try to disengage from the day to day so that I can think bigger picture. And to do mm. that, I do often have to actually step away. Um, mm. Or, you know, schedule and it's meeting with someone who is not, not a client, but someone who is going to inspire you, give you new ideas or something like that. I find that can also like just get you thinking. Um, and it's a good sort of um, kick in the pants to think, to yeah get new ideas or, you know, have a brainstorm with someone, uh, read something, you know, sit with an inspirational book, like maybe the book that's been sitting on your bedstand forever that you just haven't really got to because it seems a bit like heavy or worky or whatever it is. Um, yeah, <laughs> read a chapter of that. And I mean, I think also starting small, so it doesn't have to be a whole day, even if you start with half the day. Um, for me, that would be the morning because that's when I'm more switched on. Definitely choose the time that you're more switched on. Um, mm. Yeah, I think that would be my advice for getting started. Yeah, yeah. Now, one of the biggest things in getting started to have a business day or to carve any time out, whether it's for business or personal, is saying no. And I know we've touched on this subject before, mm. but it's, it's again, it's something that I struggle with because um, as soon as I get a, a quote in or, um, you know, especially if you are kind of just starting out as, as a freelancer, mm. um, you want to just say yes to everything. So how what what tactics do you use to say no cuz um we actually yesterday had a, a a very brief email conversation about i got a quote in i really wanted the client but i had i just don't have the time and i forwarded it to a couple of people you included and like literally everyone came back they're like we have no capacity so you know it's unfortunately it's just one of those things but coming from where i've just um come from I've, uh, I'm in burnout recovery at the moment, and we'll we'll speak about that in a little bit. But um, I don't want to go back to that place where you're working like all the time um, and putting yourself back in that kind of circle of doom that they, there's nothing else in your life except for work. So saying no, um, how how do you how do you do it? So I think the reality for me and for a lot of freelancers, and please do as we say, not as we do, but you almost have to get to that point of, oh my gosh, I'm on the brink of burnout or I'm burning out. I can't do this anymore. And that's kind of how I learned how to say no was the hard way, to be honest. And mm. now what I do is, and I'm not, I'm, I'm more of a head thinker, not a heart thinker but I'm learning to start listening to my gut when it comes. So like, for example, the project that you sent through yesterday, oh my gosh, I was tempted. And it was, you know, deadline for the end of next month. So I'm thinking, okay, that, that could be, could be feasible. Um, I wouldn't mind earning some extra money. But as soon as you'd even said to me, I have a project for you before I'd seen the scope or anything, mm. my gut was saying, no, Shay, this is not the time for this. And then I read it and I was, you know, it took me a while actually to reply, as you know, because I was thinking yeah. about it. it. It's very hard to convince yourself uh, sometimes that you actually don't have capacity or this isn't right for you right now. But I am learning and I did. I did it. I said no. <laughs> I listened to my gut. <laughs> well done. And then definitely, I'm sorry that I couldn't help you. I am, but I'm proud of me. <laughs> mm. Well, but there's definitely the an element of if it doesn't feel right, if it's not in your scope, if you, if you have any kind of hesitation, if the client doesn't feel like a good fit, if you feel like you're not getting paid enough, whatever it may be, um, just lean in and listen before you mm. are quick to say yes. Yeah. Well, you know, when you're saying yes to a project, you're saying no to literally everything 100%. else. hundred like percent. You know, so um, you, you have to be so careful. And uh, I went back to that, the, the client as well. And I'm like, I'm really sorry because the deadline is end of June and it's not, you're not able to shift it. I, I unfortunately don't have capacity. I mean, it's also, it's something that I've had to learn to do is 
I can say yes, but then the output is going to be really crap because mm. I'm not going to have it. I'm not going to, you know, give it the time be it deserves and give it the mm. time it deserves. Uh, or I'm going to be jumping between projects because mm. I just didn't actually have the capacity. So, um, yo, uh, the guilt though, like I'm a people pleaser. And so mm. I always want to say yes. So the guilt saying no is something that. I don't know if you ever get used to it, but uh, yeah. it's something that I do struggle with when I say no. It's like, I feel like I'm letting down like some kind of massive humanitarian effort. <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> World peace foiled. Absolutely foiled. Exactly. <laughs> We're going to collapse into nuclear war now. Uh, um, no, but, it's real. I mean, it's real. Yeah. But I think uh, you bring up an important point about again, looking at the bigger picture, you, the client deserves the best results. And if you mm. can't give that to them, it's actually not fair to say yes anyway. And, you mm. know, maybe it's not about that client, but maybe your other work and your other clients will suffer. Maybe your family will suffer. Maybe your poor dog won't get walked for like a week, you know? So what mm. are you, like you say, what are you giving up um, in order to please one, or not even please, because if you're not delivering the best results, you're not going to please them anyway. So yeah. Yeah. Agree. Yeah. Um, now, you know, delivering the best work, um, like I mentioned, I've, I'm in burnout recovery. So um, I, I've had, well, my business has been going for six years now. Um, you take leave and all that kind of thing. But when you're running your own thing, it's always in the back of your head, like the finances and all that kind of thing. When you're responsible for your own income i mean mm. it's something that's not very far away from from your your brain mm. you're always thinking about it so um six years did have a bit of leave here and there all that kind of thing um but uh towards the end of last year i was really tired and then q1 this year has been terrible <laughs> Um, from a personal perspective, business perspective. Um, so just uh, without going into too many details, I lost my sister-in-law. Um, my car broke down. Um, my mom had a, a, a shoulder up and my dad was traveling. So I had to go and stay and help her like do everything from eat to shower because she couldn't do anything herself. And all of this while I was, um, you know, uh, there were a couple of other things as well. I was going to say, you forgot the this... finger injury, the break. In... Yes, yeah. My, my, my wife um, cut like a giant chunk of her finger off. Um, there was an attempted robbery. Um, so, you know, there, there's been all kinds of um, all kinds of things going on. And uh, you're dealing with all of that and still trying to cope with a full workload. And plus, you're still tired from Q4 2023. So um, I did. Uh, I completely burned out. Um, and it was very, very noticeable in the client work that I was doing, especially for one specific client that was, uh, they, they, they write for a number of very um, kind of Ivy League sort of clients. So they consolidate and, and do, the, um, do the work for a bunch of um, these kind of high brow uh, mm. clients. And um, the, the outputs, I was getting such poor feedback, uh, like you know, and eventually, um, you know, you you start like this is not working. Um, so signs that you are actually burnt out um, are inability to keep deadlines. It was the first time since I started my work, since I started my business, that I was missing deadlines. Poor quality of work. Um, like a complete disinterest. I, I lost interest completely in my business. I didn't want to write. Um, but, you know, obviously you have to kind of push through because this is now your life. You have to earn money. Um, and uh, I, I ended up at the doctor because I had a complete emotional breakdown and I just like cried for three days straight. So like, you know, you don't want to get to that stage. You need mm. to take time out for, um, for yourself. So um, like I say, I'm in recovery now and prevention is better than cure. So if you are not, or if you are approaching burnout, listen to what we said previously, but if you find mm -hmm. yourself in this kind of burnout, um, period or, or burnout, uh, thing that you have to kind of recover from, um, you need to make some serious changes because, uh, you, you are going to not, um, last long-term if, if you mm -hmm. don't. So. 
what I did so what was is, the client... Sorry, what does recovery hmm. look like? So um, I had to take a, a, a good long look at my business and I actually dropped one of, I, I dropped a very lucrative client because I had overcommitted. Um, I, was, I, I was just working too much. Um, and so I had to drop a very lucrative client to make space in my, in my schedule. So what I decided to do was um, kind of work from seven to one and then spend the afternoon doing whatever, whether that's mm. napping or exercising or watching TV or whatever. And um, again, the, those feelings of guilt because like you should be working but really, um, I needed it at the time. Um, and I was, I was hoping to have a couple of months um, where I was able to follow through with this like seven to one um, work schedule, but it hasn't worked out because as soon as you create a void in your, <laughs> in your schedule, it tends to fill up with something else. Um, Go back but to part I am one, folks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, um, I've had to, like I say, I, I dropped a really lucrative client because I just couldn't cope with the workload. Um, and uh, again, what we spoke about before, I, I had to become strict in terms of um, I would schedule and do my workout at eleven. I wouldn't skip it because mm -hmm. I was so busy, and I would stop at five o'clock in the afternoon because um, I don't want to work past five. Um, I've scheduled time now for family and that kind of thing, and I'm making more of a concerted effort. Um, I'm I'm doing stuff over the weekends again because I'm I'm not so exhausted. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I would sleep all weekend if I wasn't catching up on work. So, um, you know, it was uh, it, it it's. <sighs> Burnout is really shitty. It's not something that I wish on anyone. Um, so really, like like we said, saying no, um, carving time out for for yourself, whether it's personal or um, or business related, you need to be very strict with your scheduling. So what advice would you give to someone who feels that they are either burnt out or on the brink of burnout? Um, like first step take, one. Step one uh, is have a look at what is sucking up your time mm -hmm. and be very honest with yourself as to what you still kind of enjoy doing. Cause if you're at that point, probably you hate everything. Mm. <laughs> you, you hate everything. Um, but there's something that you will hate more. So <laughs> take a look at the thing that you hate the most and try mm. and get rid of it. If mm. you can, um, if you can't maybe kind of look at, two or three things that you don't hate as much, but get rid of those to make time that you can do this other thing. I mean, we're not all, I'm very in a very fortunate position that I could let the client go and it hasn't really affected over the, the, the last couple of months, hasn't really affected my overall income, but not everybody's in that, um, in that position. So you need to kind of look at it strategically. Um, if you can get, thing, uh, get rid of the thing that you hate the most, do that. Um, if you can't, if that thing is too lucrative for you, try and get rid of a couple of other little things that will make your, your free up time in your schedule to, to focus a little bit better on that one particular client. Um, and maybe and, even make space to, although if you're burnt out, perhaps you're not thinking about this, but to make space to find ways that you can get rid of the thing you hate the most, you know, replacing mm, with mm. another but I'm not sure how feasible that is when you really are in that state of not feeling motivated, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, I put all really super big decisions on the back burner. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, uh, I, I stopped posting on LinkedIn because I couldn't keep, uh, keep up with it. I, um, I, I've got a couple of projects on the go, like, uh, like the, the podcast. Um, I'm, I'm busy developing an app as well. Um, I, yeah, you know, I got a couple of balls in the air. Um, I was voted onto my board of trustees at the complex. So there was oh, all of that. Oh, good grief. That is all a of mistake. that crap as well. <laughs> um, yeah, for, I, I must have been a terrible person in my previous life because it's oh, really no, shitty. That... <laughs> um, but, um, so yeah, I mean, all of these things I put on the back burner, um, because I just, I couldn't cope. Like I was so overwhelmed all the time. Um, so you need to create space 
so that you're feeling less overwhelmed. Mm. Um, and quite honestly, I know that like mental health and all that kind of thing, go to the doctor and get pills, man. Like if mm. that's going to help you recover. Um, I'm on a, a course of antidepressants now, like a Prozac. I feel like I'm on a med cruise again. Um, <laughs> and life is, life is good. Um, you know, don't, uh, don't let the stigma of like medication or being diagnosed mm. with a mental condition um, stand in the way of proper recovery because it's really good like, advice. You know, if, if you need the pull, it's, Essentially, what it is, is that your brain is out of whack from a chemical perspective. And sometimes you just need a little bit of medical assistance to get the chemicals back in balance. Mm. So mm. it doesn't have to be like a long term thing. But you do if you need to get over the hump, do it because um, it's it's not going to get better on its own if you don't make any changes. Because mm, you can see how it can become a vicious cycle, really, of, you know, you need to do something about this but you just don't have the capacity to do anything about it because your brain is just mm. not letting you think like that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yes, to, to go back to your question, um, or like first steps, uh, put all giant decisions on hold, have a critical look at your business as critical as you can, because your brain's messed up um, when you're burnt out. So as critical as you can and try and get rid of the thing that you hate the most in order to create space in your, um, in your schedule. And then give yourself a break because mm -hmm. um, I think that a lot of a lot of freelancers and a lot of creatives are, are very hard on themselves. We always feel like we're not delivering um, to the best of our ability and imposter syndrome and all that kind of thing comes into play. Like you're doing okay. Like if, you, if you're a freelancer and you've been doing it for a couple of years, um, you've got a couple of clients, you're doing okay. You're doing better 100%. than most. So um, you just... Trust in the process. You, you'll be okay. Um, you, you are, you've made the right decisions up to now to get to this point that you've got a, a sustainable business um, and you will bounce back. Uh, well, maybe not bounce. Um, <laughs> trickle, <laughs> trickle slowly. You'll, 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 crawl, you'll crawl back. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, give yourself a break, honestly, like physically and mentally and emotionally because um, because. Like I say, if you're not going to make a change, nothing's going to change. Mm. Oh. Well, I hope that you are feeling a bit more in control and that the trickle is trickling. Yes. So, um, like I say, um, I was hoping to kind of live the the seven to one life a little bit longer. Um, it hasn't mm. unfortunately worked out like that, but I'm I am feeling a lot more energetic and more positive. Okay. And um, I'm slowly getting all my little back burner projects back on um and i i've got a business coach as well and uh for oh, the great. first time in i've got a for the first time in months um our session last week is like oh this is the old megan that i remember <laughs> like when you first started um because the, the the last few months i mean life happens these these things mm. happen you can't stop them so you just have to kind of go with the flow um mm. but uh yeah you need to give yourself a break um even if you can't take a a, a, an extended break you you need to give yourself a, a time during the day that you can chill mm. um and and be and I think, be strict yeah your situation is is a is an example of what we were speaking about earlier where you can't be everything to everyone you can't have everything in balance you had all this shit going on in your personal life and then you're expecting to be able to show up to the same degree at work and it's actually just not possible you know so mm. if if you know that there's a lot going on in another area of your life, then maybe you do need to say a couple more no's that you wouldn't have said normally or whatever it is, but just being aware of where you needed most at that time and realizing that other things might have to suffer or just be scaled down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Look, I mean, again, burnout is not something that I would wish on anyone, but maybe it is almost like a rite of passage. I don't know if you've ever gone through like a a, a burnout or a semi burnout. Um, mm, I think so most never people like, have. Yeah, never like diagnosed per se, but I I knew when I would just start crying randomly. So at the time, I was training for a triathlon, and in the <laughs> pool, I would just cry, and, it's, and part of me was like. No, this ain't right. I don't think you meant to just be crying in the pool. <laughs> That's not cool. Um, and I also realized, you know, I wasn't, I felt so 
anxious and stressed about everything all the time. And everything had to be done quick, 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 because it had to be, because I had so much to do that I had to do it really quickly. And I mm. never had time to just actually give things the proper thought and attention that they needed. And it would just felt like a hamster wheel. And I don't know at what, maybe it was the crying in the pool or maybe it was, I was once um, <laughs> driving and I think I was just so anxious and I was like doing, like cutting my nail into my thumb. And then I was like, oh shit, why is my thumb bleeding all over the steering wheel? And I was like, oh, that's not cool. That's self-harm. <laughs> so, <Yeah>. um, <laughs> so, you know, like those kind of things and, you know, also like friends saying, oh, you're never available. My husband saying, oh, you're like a robot. And all of those little things kind of added up to me realizing I needed to make some changes. So a similar mm. approach to what you did, I thought, okay, what am I hating? And actually what's the cost if I get rid of it? Losing a bit of income at that moment was well worth being able to come back even stronger. Mm -hmm. No, it, you have to look at the long-term gain, short-term loss for long-term gain. It's kind of mm. like investment, you know, um, you, you put away and sometimes you're going to lose over the, the course mm. of six months, the market crashes or whatever, and you lose a bunch of money. But over the long term, it always increases. Um, you 100%. will make something back over the long term. So you, you need to have that kind of big picture, long term thinking. Um, mm. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you have to cut people loose, I mean, you've you've cut people loose to make space for your maternity leave. So, I mean, mm. um, it's it's just one of those one of those tough decisions um, but I think that you also need to learn from the experience. I mean, here I was, I've just kind of coming out the other side and mm. I get this quote that I really want to work on and I feel guilty for saying no, but maybe it's because it's still all very fresh in my, in my memory that like, no, you don't have the time for this. You need to look after yourself. Um, so Take it yeah, as a win learn that you said the no. Exactly, exactly. But um, I think that it's made, it's very easy to slip back into bad habits. Yes. Um, so yeah, hopefully, hopefully the lessons I've learned will will stick long term, um, or medium term, at least. <laughs> I don't, so, I, yeah. I, I believe in you. Another, <laughs> well, it's on the top of my head, a quick tip um, for managing workload is, you know, um, before on calendar blocking, so being able to, when I get, so I put my regular work in my calendar and then if I get another project, I estimate how long it will take. And if I can see that literally there's no time and I can't, I don't want to shift things around too much because I want to make sure that my priorities are still there. That also gives me a good reason to know that I need to say no, when I literally, mm -hmm. I actually can't fit it in. So doing that has also been really helpful to me to have just everything I do, not everything, but like, you know, in my work day, a couple of personal things too. So I know actually how much time I have. And I know if I literally don't have the time to do it and I would be stressed trying to take it on. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do the calendar blocking thing as well. Um, and when I was at the, the, just at the point of burnout was I was taking on more work than I had blocks available exactly um I, I mean you you do these things i mean it's one of those things we've all done it from time to time 100%. but when it becomes a consistent thing um you know that there's you know you have a problem if you are mm -hmm. over scheduling um mm -hmm. so yeah uh, calendar block and but be again be strict it's all about discipline at the end of the day um mm -hmm. everything that we've spoken about that i think that would probably be my takeaway from this episode is that whatever whatever processes you put in place whatever you're going through you need to have the discipline to make the decisions to make sure that you get to that end goal whether it's going on holiday covering your the loss that you're not working preventing burnout getting better from burnout it's it's all about discipline i agree and i think the discipline comes from the bigger picture thinking that we spoke about so mm. you know we only have limited willpower to enact um, things that we want to do. But if we have a motivating factor, then perhaps we're more likely to be more disciplined because we know what we're working towards. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, goal setting. Um, it, I don't know if you, maybe we should do an episode of this. I'm really good at big picture thinking, but um, I'm really bad at goal setting. Uh, like I feel goals should be fluid. 
and like as long as you're moving in the right direction you'll be okay um because i like to make things up as i go along um case in point i'm i'm building a patio at the moment and oh, nice. um there's there's no plan i'm just like laying bricks and We'll see what it looks like when it's done. Love it. Um, and it's it's already changed about three times. But, um, you know, it'll be okay because uh, as long as you've got the basics down, you'll be okay. And I think that's the same with goal setting. Like you mm. need to have that long-term vision. Um, but I don't know. I know you have to break down into smaller goals and all that kind of thing. Mm. But if it's too set in stone, like if you miss a mile, uh, like a marker or a milestone, uh you can it be can derail, derail you. derailed. Yeah. 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 I mean, I know there's the whole, uh, smart, what's it? Um, I can't remember what they all stand for. Measurable, uh, smart oh, specific, realistic, measurable. specific. Um, what's the A? Uh, I have no idea what the A is. No, realistic, realistic and think. time, time sensitive. Yes. What's so quickly Google. Um, so goals. there's definitely something to be said, maybe also for shorter term goals, uh, with that kind of thinking, but I agree with mm. you when it comes to longer term, it's not a, as much about a goal as a bigger picture. So with your patio, you know, that you're going to have a patio. What? <laughs> that's not specific. <laughs> I don't know how a time sensitive patio. it is. <laughs> um, achievable. A is achievable. Achievable. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so even though yeah, you I mean, the patio is is achievable. Um, the, the 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 level of uh, uh, expertise in terms of how professional it's going to look is up for debate. But um, <laughs> yeah. so anyone can throw a you couple of bricks in the ground. You have to send some before and afters. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Definitely some LinkedIn um, post fodder there. <laughs> when you're back. When you're back. Uh, well, yes. Well, I posted for the first time yesterday, um, and. Uh, yeah, so again, starting to think about all these things again, I think that I'm on the road to recovery, but it, it's 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 a long road. I mean, it's not burnout. It's not like you just get, need to have like mm. a nap at two o'clock yeah. this afternoon and you can feel okay. It's, yeah. it's, it's a weeks long, if not months long process. So mm. don't let yourself get there. Um, have discipline. Listen to all the stuff, especially that Shay said. I think she's a little bit better at this stuff than me. Um, but, uh... <laughs> I think we got some really good advice from Megan and she's in the, in the trenches. So <laughs> pay attention. Cool. Um, uh, takeaways from today. Um, my takeaway, as I mentioned before, was the, um, have discipline, um, with, with yourself, be, be strict in terms of your scheduling and in, in terms of saying no forward planning, all of that stuff. Um, because if you're not, uh, I, I, what, what's the saying? If, um, if you are, are fail to fail to plan, plan to plan fail. To, yes. But there's another one. If, um, if you are an, uh, if, if, if you make somebody a priority in your life, but oh. you're only an option in theirs, something along mm, those lines. I know lines. where you're going with this. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, someone else's and priority is going to end up being your priority if you don't have your priorities in order. Mm. Does that make sense? It does. And I mean, emails are a great <laughs> example of that. I don't know if you've read, I think it was in Deep Work where he talks about how emails are literally just other people's priorities. And, mm. you know, we feel obliged to respond because we people pleasers and, you know, it is a helpful tool too, but dedicating too much time to your email, you are basically just dealing with other people's priorities till you die at the end. So yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> um, cool. Your your main takeaway from this um, so my main takeaway, and maybe it's because I've got a new life in my life that I'm thinking about. You know what really matters. So mm. um, and so much that we think matters doesn't really matter. I know by the state of my house and um, my dog's toenails and <laughs> all these things <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that I changed my top, but I'm still wearing pajama pants, all of those things, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you learn about what the things that we obsess over, perhaps that actually at the end of the day, no one is going to be speaking about at your funeral. So I mm. think that's where I'm at. <laughs> um, something that I've, uh, I've spoken about it for years, but it's something that I'm really putting into practice at the moment is um, 
is this going to matter in five years time? Yes. And I suppose you can even say in five months time, because time yes. is no longer what it used to be. So <laughs> is, what you, is, is what you're doing right now going to matter in 10 years? Is, is the client cuck out that you're having right now going to matter mm -hmm. in five months time? Um, is the fact that you, uh, I don't know, uh, skip to workout going to matter in five months time. If it is, then fix it. If it's not, mm -hmm. then let it go because life is short. Jeez, I think we've dropped some real good nuggets here. Folks, listen I to know. us. <laughs> we, I, I think we We're should so start. Wise. And like, <laughs> we are, we really are. Like, I think maybe we should start running philosophy courses because this shit is good, man. Like, <laughs> I'm telling you, we should write a book. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, thanks, Jay. Um, it's nice to catch up and um, and get the show back on the road. Um, and uh, sorry to the listeners uh, for for the the long break between episodes. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, please um, pop some comments in um, in the comment section. We'd love to know um, how you structure your day, um, how you kind of handle the finances when you're going on leave. Um, if you've experienced burnout, how you recovered. Um, Obviously, uh, anything that you can, um, any hints and tips and hacks that you can provide um, be wise would be us. most appreciated. Yes, yeah, be be part of this philosophical conversation. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, until next time, Shay. Um, thanks, thanks for for taking the time. Um, and uh, say uh, hi to your your baby on the. Thank you, and the, I'm so glad that in you a are. Jacket. Yeah, hiding in the straight jacket. And yeah, it was so great to chat again. And I'm so glad that you are on an upwards trajectory after a tough start. And I think it's going to be a good rest of the year. Yeah, here's hoping. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Chat again. Cheers.